All right, everybody. Good morning. Good afternoon. Let's get into it. Uh, it's another beautiful day. I hope you're having a great day. I'm right here, Noor. I'm right here. I'm talking. Don't worry. I'm going to talk you through this. We're going to do it together as a team. There we are. Oh, I'm very white today. Why do I look so white today? I'm, I look like a ghost, don't I? What's going on with the colors here? Why, why do I? Do I look like a ghost? I feel like a ghost. I can see myself on the screen. And it's pretty freaky deaky. There's the new word of the week. It's freaky deaky. I guess it's getting close to Halloween. Maybe that's why. And I'll be honest, I've been thinking about my Halloween costume a lot. Got to get on that because that's a lot of fun. All right, everybody. Hello. How you doing? Let's say good morning to everybody. Let's. Yeah, I'm so white today. Check it out. Look at me. I'm white as a ghost. I swear I've been outside. I've gotten sun. I don't know what's going on. But anyways, we're there. We're here. Let's uh, let's say hello. Let's do some shameless plugs and say good morning to to our beloved ones. Uh, Gertrudis, first in the house. Good morning, Julian. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Edgar's in the house. My man. Uh, I think no. I think we're on time, right? Okay. Edgar was super early. Hella early today. Uh, interesting on a Monday. Gozia, what's up, Gozia? How you doing? Who else is in here? Asma. Hello, how are you doing? Uh, Gertrudis, yes, Gertrudis is in the house. Lolly, Lolly is in the house. What's up, Lolly? How you doing? All right, the crew is here. Mokhtar is in the house. What's up, Mokhtar? How you doing? Gert Judith is here. Uh, Aydin, hello, Aydin. How are you? What's the name of the song? Well, let me hook you up with the name of the song. It is called Cam Mitchell. So there you go. Let me throw that in there. A little Cam Mitchell coming at you. There we go. Boom, there it is. All right, what else we got here? Who else is in this place? Man, I really look like a ghost. I can't get over this. I'm freaked out. I'm freaked out by this. It's weird. Uh, who did I miss here? Videos and more. That's for you, videos and more. You got more. Uh, Noor's in the house. Hello, Noor. How you doing? Georgina, where Pat the class? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Diari, what's up, Diari? How you doing? New person. Albina, what's up? Oscar, what's up? Tekka, Tekka, uh, sorry, Tek, what's up? Uh, Ziad's in the house, what's up Ziad, how you doing brother? Arij is in the house, hello Arij, how you doing? Uh, Sunday, it's Monday, what's up? Hamid, what's up? Vladimir's in the house, yeah, dead white, exactly. I, I literally, I feel like I should take a screenshot of this. I feel like I'm a ghost or something like that. Jose's in the house, what's up buddy, how you doing? JB's in here. What's up, JB? JB, you're early today. You should go back to bed and then come back later. Uh, CD's in the house. What's up, CD? BK, just BK. Munira, what's up? All right, helpless kid in the ghost house. That could be me. Uh, all right, there we go. New. Diari's from Kurdistan, and she's new. Awesome. Welcome, Diari. Good to have some Kurds in the house. International crew. Paula's in the house. What's up? Cool. All right. This is so weird. I, I'm gonna have to tell somebody that I, I've, uh, I'm ghosting. I'm ghosting this one. Ghost. Usually, if you say you ghost someone, it usually means like you disappear and you never leave. But I'm a, I'm I'm ghosting you and I'm not disappearing. I'm just staying in your face. This is pretty funny. Okay. Anyway, so here's what we're gonna do. Let's do a quick shameless plug. It's not shameless. I got shame. Uh, but here we go. This is Smart English. You are checking us out. Please tell your friends, tell all your family, and let's get some more subscribers. We got 125,000 subscribers, 602 videos. I'm there and I'm live, and we're gonna be talking about family today, so that shouldn't be there. I don't know why that's there. But anyways, this is what we're gonna be talking about. Yes, it's live, MSA, I, I saw you, I heard you. It's all live, it's all going down right now. So let's jump into it. Here we go, let me share this document with you. We're gonna be talking about family today. Uh, and I don't really have a one question to ask you about your family because we're gonna go through some vocabulary today and we're gonna use it to describe our own family so I'm just gonna jump right into it this is the lesson so if you guys are new to it I've just added the link in there are we gonna talk are we in school to talk about families yeah kind of yeah why not we gotta talk about we talk about mom and pops and all these people, and we're gonna talk about different ways to say those things, right? That's a good one, let's add that to it. What's another way, so number eight's gonna be a question, what's another way to say dad or mom? Hmm, this is good stuff. What's another way to say dad? 
because we have a lot, right? Dad and mom. There we go. Okay, that's a question. All right, so then we're going to add some of that. We'll get some of that in there because there's a bunch, right? So we'll put those ones there. We'll put dad right there and we'll put mom right there. Boom. All right, so there's the document. Please join. Uh, I don't know. Did I share it? Yes, I did share it properly. Awesome. So we're rocking and rolling. So here we go. We're going to jump in and talk about some vocab that we used to talk about the fam, the fam. You can call them the fam. So let's put that in there. Let's talk about the fam. And the fam is the family. So you can just say the fam. And it's kind of short and it's kind of cool. So I'm spending my weekend with the fam. You know what I mean? Actually, my fam is coming out tomorrow. And one of my brother's coming out to visit me. So the fam is in town. Uh, so there it goes. It means the family. Uh, all right. So let's roll in. Let's start with number one. So here we go. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. And number one is this. Yeah, I think my computer is haunted, buddy. It's, it's a little weird. So here we go. Let's start with number one. All you guys, this is a classic Kent warm up. I'd like you guys to read the following sentences and finish them with your own ideas. Which level is this class? It's an awesome level, Iden. All right, so there you go. Get on it. There's the sentences right there. Uh, can you please use that? And I would like you to finish it with your own idea. So the first word is grew up. And if you don't know, grow up. Grow up is grow up. And you grow up, not your family grows you up. You grow up and you become, hopefully, a full-grown adult who's possibly mature. I didn't. I missed it. Missed the boat. So that's a grow up. Uh, so tell me, I grew up in a what kind of family? So you need to use an adjective there. A big family that works, Paula. Very nice. And again, who? So I'm going to put you to add a little bit more information in your sentences. Uh, tell me what kind of family you grew up in. Give me a little bit more information. I want to push you guys to give me longer answers. Is this a quiz? No, it's just a, it's just a, it's just an informal hanging out of awesome minds, smart minds. So that's what it is. We're, it's a get together. All right. And we're going to talk about some stuff while we're together. So tell me, give me that sentence and describe it. So tell me what your family is like, one word. And then give me some description, some more description. So I grew up in a small family who, uh, or which, you can use which, which or who probably, right? Because family is a thing, but it's also people. So I grew up in a, in a small family who did their best to teach me the difference between right and wrong. What can I say? I tried. I tried to do it. Uh, but they did, no, I, sh I shouldn't say it. Let me, let me be serious for a second. I grew up in a family who taught me, uh, taught me that it's important to, how do I explain this? That taught me that it's important to, in the, at the end of the day, I need to be a nice guy. So at the end of the day, you can be like, Ken's, Ken's a good guy. That's, that's what they taught me. They taught me how to be a nice guy at the end of the day. I'm a bit of a troublemaker, but I think at the end of the day, if you need, if you need me, I'm on your side. I'll be there for sure. So tell me about yourself. What did you, what did your family teach you? So I grew up in a family. No, no, no. So let's see what we got here. Marjorie's already. Ooh, I see you're super white and kind of blue. No, it's it's my computer. Uh, my computer's got me super white and super blue. I kind of like it. It's kind of a cool color. I like blue, uh, so it's kind of not bad. But ghost, yeah, I'm ghosting today, really ghosting. Uh, all right, so here we go. Vlad, I grew up in a small family who lived in the east of Ukraine. So there we go, a little more information. Very nice. Uh, CD, I grew up in a big family who is conservative. You know what? I, I kind of want to change that. I kind of want to change it from who to which. For me, it just sounds more natural to use which even though who is family and it's people. But I think in Canada we normally say which. I'm going to switch that one up. But you guys can still use who, and I think it's fine. Uh, so here we go. Next one. Lale in an Italian family who immigrated with a D from France. So there we go. Very nice. So Lale's a pure Italian. That means she's got emotions all over the place. Those Italians are emotional, I know. Uh, an Italian family who immigrated from France. And that's a good word. That's uh, one of the words we're going to be use using today. So what is emigrated? Sorry, not immigrated, emigrated. So emigrated is when you talk about leaving your country to go to a new country. You emigrate. 
And when you come to a country, that's immigrate. So they're similar, but a little different. So emigrate is leave your country. Uh, for another uh, leave leave to let's say that leave to another country leave to another country and it's going to be a weird subtle difference but immigrate is to come to another country so if I'm in Canada you immigrate to Canada but if I'm in Canada and I don't I leave Canada I emigrate to Brazil yeah I'd love to go to Brazil somebody invite me to Brazil uh, or put a ring on it. I'm cool. I'll go. I'll go there just to be on the beach and hang out. Let's do it. Uh, so immigrate, come to another country. Weird, weird difference, right? All right. Let's see what else you got here. Uh, Paula, who, uh, which, which or who loves? Don't forget loves because family in Canada we say it's one. So who loves? Which loves to play uh, musical instruments? There you go. Very nice, Judith. I grew up in a Worm and cornmeal family. That's an interesting one. Who gave me, no R, who gave me a safe and loving background? Uh, environment, who gave me a safe and loving back background is not bad. Uh, who gave me a safe and loving? Let me give you a new word, uh, Judith. This one's for you. Upbringing. Uh, so you get, usually it's my upbringing or his upbringing. Um, it's, it's like your parents bring you up. So you had a good upbringing. Here's a new word for you. So my upbringing was good. My parents were nice. They taught me good values. Uh, so an upbringing is the way you were raised. Uh, I have to use another difficult word from a child to an adult. Your upbringing. I had a good upbringing. I had a bad upbringing. You could use both of those. All right, see it. I grew up in a family who made my life a living hell. Love, you know, family's good for both of those things. They're good for loving you and making your life a living hell. They can do both at the same time. That's because they're family. They're allowed to do that. I read you. I grew up, I grew up, G-R-E-U, in a Saudi traditional family which has a who has a lot of, yeah, it really does sound better with which, so I'm going to change that. Which has a lot of rules. All right, there we go. Saudis like their rules, right? Uh, and what's going on, Arij? What's going on with all the Saudis leaving all the international countries? So all the Saudis have left Canada because somebody, now I think it's more than this, but some one of our politicians sent a tweet, and then all of a sudden all the Saudi students left Canada, and now they're going back to different countries and stuff. I think it's more political going on, right? There's a big political background maybe with the United States, but it was crazy. It's a crazy thing. So we lost all, all of our Saudi students in our school. Gone. Kaputz. Um, Edgar, I grew up in a middle-sized, a middle-sized family, a middle-sized, it's actually an adjective, family, which made me work since I was 15 years old. You should thank your family for that, Edgar, because that's a good thing, that your parents making you work, that's only going to make you more awesome. If you don't teach your kids the responsibility, I think you'll be less awesome, you'll be less independent, and you'll have less understanding. You know what I mean? It, it's a good thing. So don't 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 hate on your parents for that. That's a good. That's all good stuff. JB, I grew up in a musical family. Interesting. Who had jam sessions every week? Interesting. Cool. What kind of jam session? What kind of music? Helpless kid in the ghost house. I grew up, but I do not know. Well, <laughs> ask your parents. Newer, I grew up in. I grew up a smell. A smell family. Oh, disgusting. A smelly family. Oh my God, Newer. Change your family. I grew up in, don't forget in, I grew up in a small, S-M-A-L-L -L family who lived in East Africa. All right, there we go. Uh, all right, Lolly's got true. Yeah, exactly. I know what I'm talking about, Lolly. I've dated an Italian before. <sighs> uh, Hassan, what's up, buddy? How you doing? Uh, all right, I think I'm going to jump, 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 and I'm going to go to the next one here. So here we go. Here's number two. Uh, so now a little bit more details. Now I'm going to give you a different, a little bit of a different sentence here. Look at this one here. My parents brought me up. Now what is the difference between these two? I said I grew up in a family, but now I, I said my parents brought me up. Are they the same thing? Yeah, kind of. But I grew up. Yeah, my parents brought me up. You can see the the structure is different. 
So my parents brought me up to be, how can I say? My parents brought me up to be nice, responsible by taking me to church. My parents took me to church my, for 18 years of my life. That's true. Can't believe that. But yes, they did. They brought me up to be, to be a, a, carry, a nice person, a good person by taking me to church and teaching me values. And, you know, there's probably some good stuff in there. It's not my fault it didn't work. Well, it's not their fault it didn't work. It's definitely my fault. So there you go. Uh, okay, so tell me about yourself. Number two, my parents brought me up to be nice, caring, open-minded, hardworking, Edgar. Uh, by doing what? What did they do? So by and then a verb, by helping me, by teaching me, by no, 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 no. You want to see my family. Well, that's nice. Uh, help us, the kid, maybe I can. We want to, I guess that's what he's saying here. Oh, we want to see my family. Well, I could do that. Uh, let me see if I can pull up. I'll see if I can pull something up on, on my Facebook over here, and I'll see if I can share a photo with you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. While you guys, but while we're doing that, let's keep going here. Uh, okay, let me scroll back up. I feel like I'm missing a few things. City, it makes more sense using which. Yes, I agree, City, and that's I corrected myself. I thought it, it does sound better using which. So, saying who, I don't know if British English is different, but I agree, which sounds better. So I grew up in a family, which does sound better. MSA, can you pronounce the word taught? Taught. No, 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 skip, skip. All right, here we go. City. My parents brought me up to be determined. So again, good word, determined, like not quitting, not stopping, going, going, working hard, working hard, by showing me how to be individualistic. Interesting. So not so individual, like being alone, being by yourself, independent. You don't need help. You have to do everything yourself. All right, there we go. Interesting. Uh, Judith, my parents brought me up to be honest and trustworthy uh, by giving me an example through their lives or life you could say life but uh, two lives two people so two lives uh, Yanina hello Yanina my parents brought me up to to be don't forget don't forget all these words the parents brought me up to be a warm-hearted person by what was that word I lost my spot uh, by reading historical stores stories stories okay there you go. Uh, Arij, my parents brought me up to be humble by teaching me to respect. So I actually got to change that. To respect others. Others with an apostrophe. Beliefs. B-E-L-E-I-F-S. Uh, Mario, my parents brought me up to be responsible. S-I-B-L-E. With my studies. That's a weird one. Not by. Or you could just say by studying. You actually use an ing there. Uh, help us the kid. I'm working on it, buddy. Give me a second. I, I'm slowly getting to it. I got to open me Facebook account here. My parents brought me up to be an honest and industrious person. So industrious, uh, working hard. You know, working, working ahead, trying to get things done by teaching a lot. Okay, so there you go. Some good, some good lessons. And one more, uh, Edgar, my parents brought me up to be an independent and responsible person. Responsible, S-I-B-L-E, by making me work. Yeah, so we had that one before, right? Good. Exactly. Same idea, except instead of saying I grew up, we say my parents brought me up. It's slightly different. Uh, okay, next one. Two number threes. I'm going to introduce a new word to you, and I also have a question for you here. Uh, let me see here. Let me get these few, and then so go ahead and start on number three. Uh, there's a question in that one as well. I'll just go back and finish these. Uh, Gertrude, my parents brought me up to be a responsible S I B L E person by their example in life. I don't know why in, but we use in. Uh, Noor, my parents brought me up to be patient and listen. To listen. To listen. You still need the two there. MSA, a, 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 my parents brought me up to be successful by all their experiences. Yeah, I think that works. And Lolly, my parents brought me up to be a hard worker by being an example. Now I am the family pet peeve. <laughs> Great. You turned out okay, Lolly, or, or maybe not. I'm not too sure. The family pet peeve. So if you don't know pet peeve, it's like the one that, the thing that makes people angry. 
All right, there we go. The next one is about a median family, and there's a question there. So the question is, you have uh, an immediate family, and you have an extended family. So let me put those two in there. Your immediate family, where is that one? Let's put it there. An immediate family. So you can think of that as a close family. Um, <laughs> and close, how to explain? I don't even know how to explain that. Closer. Um, I don't know how to explain. An extended, your extended family would be the opposite. So if I say extended family, I mean like cousins, uncles, those people. Nieces, nephews. And if I say immediate family, I mean mother, father, brothers, sisters, uh, grandparents. I don't know. Actually, there's more, right? There's more. Grandparents. And I think that's everything because I've looked this up. And your immediate family is consisting consists of that. So there we go. All of this here, right there. And it could be anyone. There's a few new words here as well. Someone's spouse, so your, your partner, your, your wife or your husband or whatever. Parents, grandparents, children, grand okay, grandchildren as well. Oh my God. Brothers, sisters, mother-in-law, father-in-law, brothers-in-law. That's, that's a big immediate family. Uh, that's what business dictionary says. Is that it? Let's see. Oh, they are, okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I was totally wrong. So immediate family is basically kind of everyone. Your aunt, it's immediate family. Your uncle is immediate family. So I guess extended family is beyond that. Anyone who's not connected to your family drug. So if your brother has kids, immediate family. Your grandparents, immediate family. But I guess if your grandfather has a brother, that's not immediate family. You guys might have to Google this without me. I'm not sure I'm helping you here. But that's what it's saying here. OK, anyways, here we go. Uh, so there we go. That's all I want to clarify is what is immediate family? Um, damn, it's very complicated. All right, let's see what else we got. Three members of my immediate family. So apparently it's more. Immediate family means the inner circle. Yeah, it does. Only the closest. After a divorce, this immediate family became, became bigger. Oh, interesting. Mario, I have a question. Can you tell me what is the difference between with and by? Sometimes, yes. So, for example, if you say with, it usually means together. With someone, talk with someone, work with someone. It's kind of like together. So think of with as together most of the time. And the other one is by. By you can think of as the way, like how. Uh, sometimes we use it, but it's different, 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 different. So, for example, I go to school by bus. I go to school by train. Or I learn English by reading books. So by is kind of the way, and, to, and with is kind of together. Uh, next one. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought, JB. I thought it was just father, mother, brother, and sister. But I'm getting some different stuff on the internet. The internet is not being kind to me here. So what is it? Investopedia, who can give me a good... What do we got here? Business dictionary? Why would business dictionary say that? Someone's spouse's parents, grandparents. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to have to leave that one up. Just know that there's a distinction there, OK? Apparently, I'm not doing a very good job of giving you it. Oh, here we go. Let's use Webster's. Webster should know what's up. OK, and now Webster says it is. OK, so we, I think we were right. Let's see here. Immediate family. Let's see. A, parents, a person's parents, brothers, sisters, husband or wife, and children. That's it. OK, so there we go. You're right, JB. Totally right. Immediate family is super close family, and it's only those ones. Parents, I'm just going to copy that down because that's what I needed all along. That's what I thought it was, and then it, this thing confused me. All right, so there we go. Immediate family is that. Solved. Where's that number? OK, there we go. All the rest. Boom. All right, let's uh, let's forge ahead here. Let's go to the next one here. Divorce. Yeah, let's talk about divorce. Why not? Let's go here. So number three says, sometimes people divorce because, and I want to know the reasons. So yeah, it happens. We all know this happens. But I'd like you guys to do your best 
and explain that idea to me. So why do sometimes people divorce? Why do people divorce? Give us an answer to that. Uh, let's see what I missed here. Uh, okay, da 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 da. Good word. So Lali uses one here. She says, I have two siblings with my parents. They are my immediate family. So a new word for you is siblings. What are siblings? Siblings are brothers or sisters. So you could say, I have two brothers and two sisters, or you can say, I have four siblings. So a good word to use if you don't need to differentiate. You just want to say, how many brothers and sisters do you have? Or you can say, how many siblings do you have? There we go. Brothers or sisters. Good word. Okay. Uh, Sometimes people get divorced, JB says, because they no longer get along. There we go. Good word. Or love each other. That's true. Uh, get along. And usually with you, you, we get along. We can say, hey, we get along. Smart people. Boom. We get along. Or you can also get along with someone. So both are, both are possible. So, and what does get along with? If I say we get along, it means we have a good relationship. So that's all it means. And you could also say get on. You can get on with someone. You can get along with someone or you can get on with someone. Both are good. Uh, that next one, Yanina. Sometimes people divorce because they have different perspectives in life. Yes, I agree. Some people change, right? People grow apart. So maybe we can add that one. It's kind of about relationships, right? So, you, so imagine you have a friend. Uh, this is, isn't really for, it's more for friends than family, so maybe I won't put that one there. But grow apart. You grow up, right? But you can also grow apart. So your friend goes this way, you go this way, you have grown apart. Uh, okay, next one. Uh, Vladimir, sometimes people divorce uh, because they are from different planets. That's right. Um, men are from, there we go. So there we go. Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. So this is why, if you ever wondered why people get, maybe they get divorced, but maybe this is the reason. We're from different planets. And it's interesting. There's some guys out there who talk about the biggest differences between men and women. Like, why do a lot of guys do engineering jobs? And why do, you know, why are a lot of women nurses? Of course, there's men nurses and uh, women engineers, of course, but uh, if you look at some of the research, it says that men, there's a tendency that men kind of like these kind of jobs and women kind of like these kind of jobs. So yes, there are similarities, but there are also differences, which is kind of interesting. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, no, 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 no. CD says, sometimes people divorce because they don't listen to each other and don't get things fixed. Yeah, uh, I agree. Because they don't love each other anymore. Yes, these are all real reasons. You guys are nailing it today. Uh, some people get divorced because they don't listen to each other. Yeah, we do. Sorry, I did that one. Yes, yes, they don't have, they don't have anything, Edgar, don't have anything, nothing. We don't do two negatives in English that often, so don't have anything in common anymore. Their minds are not similar. Yeah, they have, a, what's another way to say their minds are not similar? They have different perspectives probably, yeah. Uh, Judah says sometimes people divorce because, because of, ah, lack of communication and unrealistic expectations. The lack of equality also has a big role. Ooh, deep, deep stuff on a Monday, Judith. Uh, Areej, sometimes people divorce because one of them has changed his or her beliefs. There we go. And Ziad, sometimes people divorce because one of the couple snores. Yes, that's also a, that's also a deal breaker. If you got one of these people who's like a chronic snorer, let's do a gif, shall we? You got one of these people who's just, you know, lighting it up in there, like Grandpa Simpson, like that. That could be a deal breaker. You might just be like, okay, I can't take it anymore. I need some sleep. I got a divorce. And what's another way to say divorce? Let me introduce you to that. You can say divorce, and I've also added another one. You can also say split up. Uh, you can also say separated, and I added that here. So the meaning is legally separate. There we go. Lots of reasons. Okay, let's jump ahead. Let's do one more. And then it's off you go to internet land to do some searching. Oh, let's finish with this one because this one looks fun. Let's do this one. One more and then it's time to do some, some searching. Ooh, soulmate, good word. Uh, okay, so here we go. Uh, number four, last one. 
Uh, I was a little na na na, and you can put whatever you want in there when I was young, and turned out na na na, and you can put whatever you want in there. Maybe you were a little, and you turned out to be amazing, right? Maybe you were the opposite. Maybe you were a, a, li a little, a little angel when you were young, and you turned out to be rotten. There you go. You know, it's like, oh, when he was cute, he was so he was so nice. And then got older, it's like, oh, rotten. I'm not cute anymore. Not not interesting. So when I, w I was a little, and here you can probably use an adjective. I was a little angel. I was a little devil. I was a little misfit. That's a good word, like a troublemaker. I was a little troublemaker when I was young. Uh, but, and let's change it to but. Maybe but is better. But, but I turned out totally different what would you say about that all right so give me give me your, your answer there for number four I was little when I was little I was na 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 but then I turned but I turned out na 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 and what is na 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 all right so for example when I was young I was a little troublemaker that's true I was a little tr I was a little troublemaker when I was young a little misfit a little uh, a little brat when I was young, but I turned out to be amazing and caring and so nice, just a wonderful person. Mm -mm, not even close. All right, that was a joke. All right, but go ahead, you tell me about yourself. Did you change a lot? Were you kind of the same? You don't have to use but, you could just say and. You could say I was a little angel and I am still a little angel. Maybe that happened to you. Uh, Hassan says, oh, he's still on the last one there. Uh, helpless the kid in the ghost house. <laughs> it's a weird one. Uh, to be, uh, I was, what? to be a little bad on the bright side. I was good. Uh, Lolly, I was a little kind girl, but I turned out, turned, turned out, turned out a bad girl, or turned out to be a bad girl drinking a lot of beer. It happens. I, I'm with you, Lolly. I, I kind of ended up the same way, so... Uh, Here's to the bad guys. Live on. Cesar, naughty but serious. So I was a little serious when I was young, but I turned out, sorry, I was a little naughty when I was young. Naughty is like bad, but I turned out serious. Okay, there we go. So total, total 180. Judith, I was a little shy when I was young and turned out to be a teacher who is not afraid was not I think is better because you're still if you're still a teacher then you use is right who is not afraid to speak anymore there we go and Nina I was a little naive good word naive means you don't know many things you don't know the world you don't have experience so you're naive I was a little naive when I was young and I'm still now sometimes so there you go so no but just and still uh, Gertrudis I was a little ingenious when I was young and I turned out to be a little devil yeah eh, I can relate I can relate my jumping out from behind the door to scare my mom was is something that I took great pleasure in so I agree a little devil as well uh, all right so there we go so you teach now so I would say yeah so someone who is not afraid to speak out anymore Marjorie I was a little tantrum <laughs> interesting word uh, I was a little tan tantrum can I use tantrum as a adjective I don't know good question I was a little tantrum, talkative when I was young, and then turned out a patient and the most silent person. Interesting, like total 180, boom. Uh, okay, Judith does not teach now, so was. Okay, so you're right. Uh, Paula, I was a little simple girl when I was young, but I turned out, turned out to be a great doctor. Well, good for you, Paula. Very nice. Uh, shy, introvert, all right, very good. Okay, so we are on number four, but I think I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run with this. I'm gonna go through some vocab for you. Uh, turned out. So what does that mean? Turned out. I think you guys got it already. Turn out means become. So I was bad, but I turned out good. So it usually changes, right? So it's a phrasal verb we use in English, which basically means become. Another one we used here. Uh, number. Let me pull this up here. Uh, number five. If I say related to, so see that word up there? I'm having trouble making this the right size. Let me try that. Let's go here. See that word here where it says related to? Uh, related to means like your relation, like a relative. So for example, I am 
I am, you are related to your cousin, you are related to your uncle. So I wish I were related to someone. Related to means in my family. So there's another combination we use. Uh, related to, and usually be related to. Is a, it's a verb, I guess. Be related to, have a family connection to. To someone. Cool, good word. A uh, couple more before we jump into the next stuff. Immigrated, we talked about. Settled down, we didn't talk about. So let me pull up that word right there. Settled down is a word we use in English to, which basically means to get a serious job, have a family, maybe a dog. Settle down. Stop moving. Stop, you know, dating. Just one, one partner, family, house, serious job. Settle down. So it's, it, it basically means kind of stop moving. So it's kind of like stay in one place, settle down. So how, how is, let's find this, oh nice. Uh, let's see what the internet says about settle down for a definition. Settle down definition. What does it mean here? Settle down, to become quiet, calm. Children, settle down, children, things settle down here, I'll come for a visit. To become quiet or calm. Calm. Serious job. House. Kids. All those things. This kind of means settle down. Okay, good. And I think I got one or two more here I wanted to hit you with. Turned out we did. Good. And last one is take after. This is a good one as well. Uh, if somebody asks you, who do you take after in your family? Uh, and take after is similar to maybe you look similar to your your mother or your father or um, you maybe you sound similar maybe you look similar maybe your behavior is kind of similar so I take after my dad he makes jokes and he laughs at them himself so I did the same thing sometimes I make a joke and I, I'm the only one who's laughing at my own jokes but it's because of my dad and also my dad has a horrible memory I also have a horrible memory so I definitely take after. It's usually looks. It usually talks about looks. But I, I, when I say it, I usually mean kind of everything. Like, who do you take after in your family? Like, oh, I'm very similar to not only appearance, but maybe personality. I say, oh, I take after my father. So I use it that way. And I think you can use it not only about appearance. All right, so let's go off here. Um, and maybe let's do this one here. So take after is another way to say resemble, take after. Let's put that up there. Take after is a phrasal verb. Actually, I think it's a verb and a preposition, but that's okay. Resemble in looks or personality or behavior or whatever, right? So there we go, take after. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I would like you guys to do the same thing. I've done some work and I've, I've found some stuff we use to talk about family. Uh, so I'm going to get you guys to do the same thing. Please go, go to the internet and search for vocabulary about family. So I want you guys to find out some new stuff. So I use some stuff that we use to talk about family. And we, it might be some other things. Like, for example, what's another way to say dad? Uh, you could say dad. You could say, you could say pops. My pops. Uh, kind of a slang way, right? My pops. Not my poops, my pops. Uh, you could also say the old man or my old man. Uh, I, I like to say the old man, but you could use both. Uh, so I look like the old man, you know what I mean? Like I got the same look. I could say my pops, I could say the old man. Uh, what else could you say? I'm not too sure. What about mom? What's another way to say mom? You can say mama, of course, my mama. Uh, what's another one? Don't say, don't call your mom old. You can call your dad old, but you can't call your mom old. So there you go. What's another way to say that? So go ahead and go to the internet. I want you guys to find some vocabulary which we use to talk about family. Um, okay. Sugar daddy is not the same thing. That's uh, quite different, buddy. Uh, I'm not family. Not on the topic of family. That's a different uh, English topic. That's relationships, buddy. Papa, daddy, papi, papi, there we go. Yeah, you could call him papi. Hey, papi. I like it. That's a good one. P-A-P-Y. 
my pappy, hey pappy. Stepfather, stepmother. Okay, so these are words, so again, that we can use. Uh, stepfather, your stepfather. Okay, so if, you, if your parents get a divorce and you get a new dad, he is your stepfather. Uh, and again, stepmother, same thing. Stepfather or mother. Okay. Uh, how do I explain this? A new <laughs> father or mother by marriage. By remarriage. Best way. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Papito. <laughs> nice. Yes, all those. Mumsy. Oh, interesting. I've never heard Mumsy before, but yeah, that's kind of funny. That almost sounds Australian. Mumsy. There we go. Okay, let's add it to the list. You could definitely do that. Where did my list go? Where did it go? Something happened here. Did somebody delete? I feel like somebody's messing with my list. Where? Oh, there it is. It's over there. Mumsy. All right, why not? Hey, Mumsy. Why not? Sounds funny. All right, what else we got here? Uh, mama, yeah, definitely mama. Mommy, yes, your mommy, of course. Mommy and pappy. Sure, when you're a kid, you call mommy, for sure. All right, what else we got here? Also in law, relatives, yes, good word. So who are your relatives? Your cousins, your uncles, your aunties, uh, your nieces and nephews are all relatives. So I guess this would be extended family, right? So relatives, uh, members, members of your extended family, are all relatives, okay. Uh, what else we got? Yammy, no, Hassan, not in English. I'm not too sure about that one. Yes, I think we do. There's a lot of words for sure. Papichku, there we go. Very nice, mama. Twin, okay, so Gertrudis is a twin. So a twin, maybe a twin uh, would be if you were born, uh, two children born at the same time. do you have a twin some people have a twin brother twin sister something like that and you also have identical twins it's exactly the same right they look very very similar so you have identical twins and what's the opposite of it, an identical twins two children born at this just twins I guess uh, so let's just change that so you have twins and identical twins so two children born at the same time and look the same identical twins siblings we got mother-in-law yes we have a, a mother and a father-in-law okay mother-in-law so your new parents by law New parents because of marriage. There we go. Mother and father-in-law. Cool. Siamese twin. Yes, we could do that as well. All right. So what else do we use? Give me some. Give me some verbs, right? Give me some other stuff. Some uh, triplets. Yes, you could have triplets. You could have twin twins. You could also have triplets. You're right. Three children born at the same time. Okay, there we go. And give me some other stuff. So give me some other words we use, like uh, grow up, um, take after. What are some other, let's see what else we got here. We'll move Grandpa Simpson. We'll see what else we can find. You settle down and you have a family. So let's look at uh, vocabulary. Let's look at verbs, verbs to describe families. And let's see what comes up. I can find some. A cup of joe. Phrasal verb. Here we go. This is what I want. Phrasal verbs for family. Aha. Boom. There it is. Fallout. Oh, this is a good one. So, fallout. Take a look at this one here. This is a good one. Uh, fallout with someone. If you fall out, it means argue with someone and never speak to them again. Sometimes it happens. You. you fall out with a family member so fall out uh, you can say we fell out 
or I fell out with my brother, I fell out with my mother. So it's a sad situation, but sometimes it happens and you fall out with someone. So it's a phrasal verb, which means to, to become angry and not speak to, together anymore. So there we go. What else we got here? Split up, we talked about. Look up to someone. Good one. This is a good one. You can use this for any situation, but of course you can definitely use this for people in your family. Look up to means you respect. So who do you look up to? Do you look up to your father because, oh, he worked very hard? Or do you look up to your mother because she worked very hard? So you look up to someone, which means you respect. Respect someone. Okay, what else we got here? Tell off. Ooh, there we go. Um, tell someone off. If this happens in family kerfuffles as well, tell someone off. So if you tell someone off, the best person to tell off is your boss when you're quitting your job. So you say, you know what boss, I'm going to quit this job. You're a terrible guy. You work everybody too hard and you don't appreciate anything that anybody does. So mm, you and I'm out of here. See you later. Drop the mic and walk out. So you tell someone off. That means you say all the things in your mind which you want to tell this person like that. You tell them off. So there we go. Tell someone off. Um, how to explain it. Say all the negative things about someone to them, to that person. And there you go. That's how you tell someone off. Okay, what else we got here? You guys got a few coming in. Uh, there we go. Oh my god, some pretty serious words. Uh, help us a kid. How can a question start with W? I don't know. I don't think it can. Uh, proud of? Yes, that's something we use as well. All right, let's see what else we got here. We got those. Those were good. Let's give me some more of those. Adjectives to describe friends and family. Describe relationships. What else we got? Describing family members. Here we go. Let's try this one cousin daughter okay so here we go let's go through some of the basics right you got aunts you got brothers you got cousins you got daughters fathers grandchildren right so your grandparents maybe you are that you're the grandchild so your grandparents you have grandparents and they have you grandchildren granddaughter grandson grandmother grandfather you have a great grandchild and you can also have a great grandparent so maybe if your grandparents are alive and their parents are still alive Sometimes it happens you have uh, great grandparents. So let's add that one to the to the list there. Great grandparents. Your grandparents parents. There you go. Or great grandchildren. Anyways, you get the idea, right? Great grandparents, great grandchildren. Next one, what else we got? Husbands, ex-husbands, in-laws. So there you go. If you want to shorten it up, you could say, oh, my in-laws are coming to visit, um, right? Your father-in-law. You could say your mother-in-law and your father-in-law or your in-laws. So both your new parents because of marriage. So let's change that. Ah, new parent. Hmm. All right, there we go. Next one, son-in-law, daughter-in-law. So again, same thing, you know that word, law. Nieces and nephews. We didn't really talk about this. So my, my brother has three girls. So actually, well, he has three, but actually technically have four nieces. And nephews would be the boys. So nieces are the girls, nieces. Okay, and I think we're rolling on time here, so I'm going to get you to do one more thing. Uh, nieces, so a brother or... S oh, how to explain? Anyways, I'm just going to put those words there. I think you know what I mean, and that's fine. All right, so here's what we're going to do. The last thing we're going to do for today, because we're running out, I would like you guys to use today's vocabulary. And tell us about tell us in how many words let's say about 50 words how many does this thing allowed uh, 50 39 how many words is that tell us in 
50 to 90 words about your family. Okay, so now you got a little chance to introduce yourself. I would like you guys to tell, tell, uh, tell me and tell the rest of the class about your family. All right, so use anything you've learned today. Give us a little insight into your family. So let me throw it up there. Uh, and this is what I'd like you guys to do. Take that. So there we go. Use today's vocabulary. And in 50 to 90 words, tell us about your family. Okay, what are they like? Uh, what, are your, what are your brothers and sisters like? Um, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, these things. Um, your immediate family. Who brought you up? You know, what, what kind of family did you grow up in? So basically you have total freedom to use any of this vocabulary that we've used today to talk about your family and explain them to us. All right, so give us a little thing. I'm gonna, I'll do the same thing. I'll try to do a few sentences about my family as well. So start with where, you know, think about things like uh, where did you grow up? Um, who helped to raise you? Uh, that's another one we can use, raise kids. My parents raised me uh, or brought me up. It's the same thing, so let's add it to that one. Uh, brought me up, where did it go? Right at the beginning. Where are you? Yeah, okay, anyways, I'll figure it out. Brought, raise you, raise someone. Bring someone up. Okay, so it means the same thing. So. Let me tell you a little bit about mine. So I'll tell you a little bit about my background here. And you guys, while I'm doing that, you tell me about yours. So here we go. Let's make that a little bit smaller. Here we go. So I... Come on. Grew up in a small town called Bosnia, Manitoba, in Canada. Again, so there's my first word, grew up. My immediate family was myself, was my parents my brother, my older brother, and I. Okay, so again, there's number two, my immediate family. I got two words right there. Um, so, my parents brought us up by taking us to church. Yeah, it is French, exactly. But there's no French people in the small town. So it's more of a lie. So my parents brought us up by taking us to church to teach us good values. That's true. That's what they tried. So there we go. There's a new word, new combination, good values. Unfortunately, Kent is a little brat. Kent was a little brat. And if you don't know brat, it's like bad child who didn't listen. But thanks anyways, mommy and pappy. There we go. Boom. So there you go. I've written a little introduction about myself using today's vocabulary. So if you guys could do the same, that would be amazing. Uh, and there you go. Try to use a few. I've used one, two, three, four, five. Rocked it. And I gave you a new little word, a little brat. Here's a new little combination you can use. I think we should do insults next time. Next week on Thursday. What do you guys think about doing insults? within the realm of education and not getting out of control. But like a little brat, that's a little comb that's a combination of words you should know. I think that's going to be the topic on Thursday. Boom. Insults. We're going to we're going to insult a lot of people. Yeah, why not? We need to learn this. It's English, it's education. It's all good for you. 
All right, helpless the kid is in on it. Yeah, insults, right? You, uh, hey, dummy, hey, stupid, you don't know what insult means? I insult your intelligence, right? Insult, so we say bad things to people, right? No, it could be swearing, but it's not necessarily swearing. Yeah, exactly. Well, we all do, JB. We all love insulting. Like, like this guy. You know this guy. Where is he? Everybody loves to insult this guy. So maybe we can have a target for our anger. Like, look at this face. Whoa, look at that guy. Who doesn't love insulting that guy? Well, look at that. Look at those eyes. No, no. You're a jerk. Nobody likes him. So, anyways, maybe this man could be the target of our anger on Thursday while we insult him or maybe some other people some rude people so there we go so that's insulting maybe that's gonna be the topic on Thursday so before we finish here let me do one more uh, helpless the kid has one he says family cares my Bryant like me huh? and help me hate uh, I don't know what happened there so I can't I can't do that um, did you cross the line, JB? No, I think you're good. I think the educational line is, uh, when I'm teaching class, there's a, it, it's, it's harder to cross. It's fine. So anyways, I think that's it. Uh, I, don't, I don't think anyone's got some sentences, but I hope you guys found that useful. A lot of words we can use to talk about ourselves, right? Everybody likes to talk about themselves, and a lot of that stuff you can use to explain people in your family, family trees, siblings, getting along, a lot of good stuff there. So go ahead, maybe a little homework activity. I'm going to give you homework this week. Go ahead, and I want you to take that vocab and put it together. Edgar's got one. Edgar, you the man. Uh, let me get Edgar out of here, and then uh, we're all good to go. Edgar says, I grew up in Sao Paulo. Boom. My immediate family, boom, is my younger brother, older sister, and myself and my parents. My sister is divorced, and she lives, she lives in a different city in Brazil. My parents are retired. There's another one. Do I tr support Trump? What do you think, Mansoor? Not a chance in hell. All right, and with that ado, we'll see you later. God bless America. I hope it gets better. We'll see you guys next week. Have a great week, everybody. See you on Thursday.